You have to excuse me if I sound drowsy. I haven't slept in a while, and it's 5 o'clock in the morning. Oh no, it's 6 o'clock in the morning. Time flies when you're working like a slave. It could have been a week ago or more. Could have been two. Who knows? But my contact at New Type HQ hit me up and asked me a very simple question. Do you paint with acrylics? And I said, yes, I do. Sometimes I use them for reverse washes and sometimes I hand paint them. I've moved away from hand painting with lacquers. Since I spray with lacquers, painting with lacquers means if I make a mistake, gotta start over again. But anyway, I was sent some of the AK paint sets, a couple of the metallics and a couple of the intense colors and I believe inks. Now, these paint sets are something you might be interested in if you paint acrylics or if you want to get into hand painting as well as airbrushing and you don't want to deal with all the hassles that come with lacquer paints because there's a lot of them. Uh, you should definitely invest in a full respirator with a shield in my personal opinion because if you get lacquer in your eyes, kiss them goodbye. You're going to be colorblind, best case scenario. First, I did do some priming of resin pieces I had laying around for the test subjects because painting spoons, it's cool and all, but you want some real world sort of scenarios that give you an idea of what you're dealing with. So I set out to getting to work on something I hadn't done in a while. It was my failed Mandalorian project. Ah, uh, my resin castings split open or started to crack. And the only ones that survived really was Baby Yoda. So I figured, why not paint the little sucker? It'd be interesting to do and some good practice for me. And I did paint a couple spoons. Once I got the black base down, I then did a Zenithal highlight on a lot of the stuff I was working with. Since I was going to do some inks, I felt a great way to display the slight difference between an ink and a normal sort of acrylic color would be a Zenithal highlight. I know, it's kind of like nerdy paint stuff that you either A, don't know, B, don't care, or three. Why is there three when I'm doing AVCs? God, I'm sleepy. After I laid down my Zenithal highlight, it was time to break out some colors. I used the intense color green because it was the only one I had. And this color is actually very intense. I love the pigments in these acrylics. Now, I'm not much of an acrylic guy. I prefer lacquers, and I use acrylics sparingly but I must say that I am pleased with the overall colors of these acrylics. They're very rich in the intense color set. The one downside is since it walks the line between something you can hand paint and something you can airbrush, you have to thin these. I found that these acrylics don't much care for the thinner from Vallejo. So yeah, I ran into inconsistency issues. I'm currently using a custom Micron airbrush that could have also led to problems. It's a 0.23 millimeter needle. So when you're working with a needle that small, it can lead to clogging and other issues. So I had to ride this paint very, very, very thin, but not that thin. This isn't a review for the airbrush, so let's work on the painting. I started nailing off Baby Yoda with that beautiful rich green, which in all honesty was probably too bright for my liking. But on the other hand, I was too lazy to sort of make a darker base green and work my way up in tones. This is a test, not a contest, and I wasn't painting something to sell or uh, put on display. I'm just checking out these paints. And I have to say, the intense color line from AK, I like a lot. I'm impressed with it, in all honesty. This is something I could do with. In fact, I like them more than the Vallejo mecha colors because it's just so rich and with the right mixture of thinner it sprays on like a dream now after i got my base coat down i figured there's two roads i could go call it a day right there or add a little extra pizzazz and i figured why not i started mixing i started mixing the yellow with the green obviously to get a lighter color green and I kind of overdid it had a neon vibe but whatever ironically I forgot to film myself doing the highlights on baby Yoda so we're just moving on I probably thought I pressed the record button and didn't it happens it was two in the morning and I was tired 
I then moved on to some metallic colors. Um, acrylic metallics and I don't get along. The only acrylic metallic I like is the metalizer version of Vallejo. All the other acrylic metallics I despise. And once again, since I didn't have the official thinner for this, I ran into some slight issues. I'm going to say that the issue was most likely me and my mix ratio for the thinner with the metallic. Overall, it wasn't bad. The gold was all right once I had it right, but it took a little getting used to. If you're used to working with acrylic metallics or acrylic paints in the first place, this will probably pose no issue for you. So I won't use this as a good barometer for myself. Next up, we're trying the inks. Now I did a Zenithal highlight on this classic Norris figure that you can find in a master grade goof. Here is the beauty of inks. And this is why they're very popular in the miniature hobbyist area. The ink gives you the color you're looking for, but it's just transparent enough that the Zenithal highlight and the shadows that you place can still be visible whether you painted them by hand or you airbrush them. I probably should have thinned these out just a little bit more to get a, a smoother paint job, but uh, I figured let's see how it is out of the bottle. I just wanted to just test it, you know, to give you an idea. So thinning it might be a good idea, but not by too much. And as you can see, all the shadows that were left from the black backing with the Zenithal highlight are very visible. If you put this many layers of just normal blue, let's say, you would have drowned out your Zenithal highlight by now. And this is what makes inks interesting. On top of that, the inks can be used over a pre-existing paint job to like return some sort of luster or color to it. Or you can give it a slightly different tint. Now, I'm not going to sit here and pretend to be the master of inks. I dropped probably like $100, $200 on dealer Rollwell. RK inks and I didn't get the overall finish I wanted from them but with these I'm definitely finding that so it's pretty cool to see that uh I can use these inks and get the desired look these will definitely be used especially the white when I'm doing color transitions in something like a beam saver or whatever so yeah these get a big thumbs up from me the other thing though i should say is like uh some of the inks aren't clear enough for me like translucent enough i should say they tend to be more like highlights when i'm hand brushing them so could be something i'm messing up who knows the colors are very beautiful on the uh intense colors i like them a lot it's probably one of the richer colors i've seen if i could just get my thinning ratio down correctly I might use these for more than uh, just sporadic things, uh, but they dry flat for the most part. So uh, here's what you're looking at, the four spoons I painted, because you might go, why didn't I do silver or something or like steel? A good barometer for me when it comes to acrylic metallics is how good is their gold. Silver and those sort of colors, like derelium or whatever, you can... Uh, you can get away with but a good gold in an acrylic says a lot to me then i moved on to the next portion of uh hand painting these paints straight out of the bottle no thinning whatsoever and this is a long and boring process actually of me painting baby yoda i don't know who the hell would want to see this because it is so boring to watch it's fine when i'm doing it but when i'm like i'm sitting here i'm editing and i'm watching again and i'm just kind of like oh boy this is going to be a long one this is going to be a long one. I'm painting in that eyeball. Just the outer rim of the eye should be white with Baby Yoda from what I could tell from uh, reference photos. Any more than that, and it runs the risk of looking odd. You know, you got to like look at Baby Yoda's eyes like uh, a dog. Because you know how like little dogs have that little bit of white in the corner of their eye? That's right, Fluffy. Lick your little feet, you sweet little monkey. Oh, ironically... When I was painting Baby Yoda, Fluffy showed up to sit on my lap and uh, she watched for a little bit. And then, like I'm telling you, she got very bored. Uh, I cut out all the restlessness of the pup walking on the table. She also licked Baby Yoda's head. So, yeah, that sucked. 
<laughs> it's like, what the hell are you doing, dog? You know, the, the joke's on me. I don't know why in God's green earth I thought the dog wouldn't lick Baby Yoda. I was like, she's not going to do anything goofy. It's a dog. I keep thinking she's smart like a person. Well, she's pretty smart, you know, in all the wrong ways. You know, like mischievous ways of being smart. Uh, this is where I started using the uh, green ink to see if I could like have a transition between the pink of the ears into the green. And it didn't work well. I found that it really read more like a paint at that point. It like wasn't translucent enough for me. So uh, noticing that weird discrepancy i ran with it and started using it to paint more highlights rather than mixing my own highlights because why not let's see what happens if i do this uh here's uh one of the mando heads that survived i brush painted on that silver it's basically like uh something steel i forgot the name of it but it went on like a charm i liked it and here's a uh, baby yoda i heavily contemplated giving him little hairs by basically taking like uh static grass i have some really long white static grass and just putting in little hairs one at a time then i realized how much time that would take how stupid it was and for the fact that this was never going to be on display because it's a broken piece there's a lot of cracks and stuff you can't see um i had some issues with the resin i don't know what the problem is but a lot of my prints that this was a part of uh, just sort of died. The, the split opener started cracking. So uh, I don't know. This guy was a, all that was left. He's a perfect candidate to just paint away. So here we are. And that should do it. I hope you didn't mind the weird filter I was using. I call it filter. It was like a sort of movie color tint I wanted to go with because uh, I'm Martin Scorsese. If you don't know. And that should do it. Um, Overall consensus, I like the AK acrylic paints. I think they're actually very good. And I would recommend them to anyone who paints acrylics or if you don't paint acrylics, but you want to have some in your arsenal to use for hand painting, reverse washing, or whatever else you want to do. I, I would say these would be pretty good for painting Warhammer 40K figures. You know, I would say definitely. If you paint acrylics normally, these I would recommend these if you paint acrylics. Since I don't paint acrylics, uh, I tend to make mistakes when getting the ratios for airbrushing, but whatever. Yeah. Uh, me likey. Now, me sleepy.